Hi, and welcome back to my channel. I am the Art Whisperer, and on this channel, I like to talk about art interpretation and its connection to current day life. Now, I do hold a BA in art history, childhood dreams, but remember, this is for entertainment purposes only, so like, let's just have some fun, get right into this. Before my clothing seems to swell up any more than what it is, I love it, it's so obnoxious. Now, this week's piece is by Alfred Fitch Bellows of 1871, The Village Elms. The Village Elms is a beautiful piece done in watercolor, also connects to murder. Dun, dun, dun. Fitch Bellows. He was an extremely like super duper redonkulous talented man. He was a teacher, an architect, a painter, an etcher, an engraver. I mean, he he was like a jack of all trades. He also held multiple memberships, some of them honorary. I mean, you're talking about he had a membership as an early founding member to the American Watercolor Society, an honorary member of the Royal Belgian Society of Watercolor, member of the New York Etching Club, the Philadelphia Society of Etches, and the English Royal Society of Painters, Etches, and Engravers in London. Now he's most known for his watercolors in the Hudson River School style, which is, it was a movement of artists that painted landscapes and they were heavily influenced by romanticism, which kind of is a glorification of nature. The beautificent mountains to the high soaring birds and the poison ivy and bird eating, or sorry, Goliath bird eating spiders, okay? This is why I am not an outdoorsy kind of gal, okay? Mastering etching was one of his talents. He had so many things, memberships everywhere. And you wanna know what I'm a member of? Costco and the public library. So, you know, I'm working, I'm working my way up. Bellows died in 1883. He was remembered as someone that was full of peace, calm, and serenity in his soul, much like his art pieces. Let's take another look at this piece, The Village Elms, which is a totally dumb name. It kind of sounds incomplete. I mean, if it was important enough to paint, then it should have been important enough to put down like which village, okay? Because if they're painting, from life, then it's obviously like a real village somewhere. Over time, yes, the richness of the original color had been sucked out. Kind of like a 20 year old sucking the richness out of some 80 year old millionaire. Let's take a look at this late 19th century photo of a town. Very similar, you got the piece, you've got just beautiful, huge homes, nothing really happening. Now let's take a look at the same street, but a current photograph. Notice anything, right? Totally different. I mean, you do have the same houses, but on the opposite side of the street, now you have the district courthouse. It is super duper fitting because Coinkadinky, it's across the street from a super duper famous house, Fall River, the Lizzie Borden Fall River. I told you it involved murder. Dun, dun, dun. How does this relate to the crime, the house, the town of Fall River? Well, Bellows, I love that last name, Bellows, dun, dun, dun. had a lot of Quinky Dinky right here. I'm telling you, this painting or well, the etched image of this painting hung in the Lizzie Borden house, which is a major tourist attraction right now. And this major tourist attraction is now a bed and breakfast, which I've stayed at two times. Okay. Now, while I was there, I never noticed this piece because I'm a tall art hard and I don't, you know, it happens. I mean, I have a lot of art hard moments. 
first things first. The Bordens were one of the wealthiest and oldest families of Fall River. Now, Andrew Borden, he, Lizzie's father, was a wealthy Borden. Not like one of the super duper wealthy ones, but you know, the man had money. But he was also cheap. The kind that he could have afforded electricity, totally, when it came into town in 1883, the same year that Bellows died, but he chose not to. 1892, just a little bit in the future, that was the year that Andrew Borden and his wife, Lizzie's stepmom, Abby, was axed to death. And a lot of people believe that it was Lizzie's fault. And what happened, like a quick roundup for all of you artarts that have no idea who Lizzie Borden is, in 1892, apparently, she was the only one home, within the home. They had a maid and she was outside. And Lizzie also had a sister that lived there, an older sister named Emma, but she was away. And Lizzie, being the only one home, was there and claimed that somebody murdered her father. When the neighbor spotted her at the doorway, you know, she said, somebody killed father. I don't know why I said that with like a slight accent, you know, somebody killed father, but that's what she apparently said. The father was axed to death in the sitting room, right? You could see in the photograph where the sofa is. It's a horrific crime scene, thank God. It's kind of blurry and nobody knew where the stepmom was. Lizzie claimed that somebody came with a note and Abby, went out to visit a sick friend. Upon looking around, they discovered her body upstairs. She was also axed to death. Now, being in the home, in the layout of the home, I'm just going to say that whoever did this had to have been seen, okay? But that's me. Now, with the crime scene photographs, take another look at the one with Andrew. You could see above his body there's a framed art piece on the wall now it's way too blurry to know what that piece is obviously but i can speculate i can imagine that it is the village elms by bellows because if you look at a more current photograph of the same room with the sofa it's actually a reproduction you can see the etched image of the village elms hanging. The owners really took their time having the home look exactly the way it did during 1892. So, you know, is it far-fetched to think that that image hung above the real sofa? I don't think so. And I love to speculate. I mean, it, truth be told, I'm going to speculate on who was guilty. And all I have to say is that Lizzie Borden, super duper insane psycho freak, is guilty. Like 100%. And I speculate that the maid and her sister were totally in on it. And I also wonder if Lizzie knew that her great, 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 great grandfather was the first person in America to be convicted, sentenced, and hung for matricide Okay. I also wonder, and, and this one she had to have known, okay? Her great aunt, also a murderess, killed her, two of her three children and then herself. And where did she live? Right next door. What does this tell us? That insane psycho freakness runs in her DNA, okay? And what runs in my DNA is a love for cheese. Ah, all kinds. Let's take a deeper look into that beautiful piece, The Village Elms by Bellows. It's, it's the one that fills you with warm fuzzies. Think of those warm fuzzies, embrace them, and now I'm gonna murder them. Let's look at some of the little details that you might have missed that do have a, an aura of mystery behind them. Let's look at the people. Not the midget lady with the kid, but of the three individuals, the man between two women. 
I like to imagine that it's like Andrew between his two daughters or even between Lizzie and Abby since Lizzie hated Abby. It makes me wonder, what are they talking about? Are they talking about politics? His money, his will, his gas? I don't know, but it's very intriguing, especially since you have something else that's super creepy. Take a look by this tree on the ground. It kind of looks like some deep, seedy, tiny little cave where I wonder what's there. A wild animal? Town drunk? The ick clown? Leprechaun gold? But either way, it kind of creeps me out. Like I wouldn't want to walk past there. By that tree, and the tree has some kind of a carving there. It's not very clear as to what's carved. I'd like to imagine that it would be the name of the village, but we all know that that wasn't important enough. It's kind of fitting. I mean, thinking of the darker things, looking at the caca colored sky, it's very, very ominous, which makes it a fitting piece to be in this home, to be in that room, to be on that particular wall. But what do you think? Do you think that this painting, The Village Elms, is one of true calm? Do you think Lizzie Borden did it? Do you have a lot of artard moments? Put it in the comment section down below. Hit that like button, subscribe, and come back next week to see what piece I choose to discuss. It still involves this case. So stay tuned here on the Art Whisperer.